Hello and welcome back, everybody, to episode 143 of the DanJohnUniversity.com podcast. Welcome back. Uh, as always, uh, I give you a bunch of information at the end uh, to get in contact with us, but most people, as I'm starting to learn, don't stick around to the end when all the information comes. So if you have questions, podcast at DanJohnUniversity.com, and I'll do my best and brightest to answer each and every one. Um, Got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, the one thing I am pretty uh, excited about is that I expanded the goal achievement course on the university. Um, now, this course is, oh, I guess, about a year old. And then basically, I have been working on it since then. And so I added about another, I'll probably double the size. So if you've already uh, purchased the course, you remember Dan John University, um, you'll, you'll notice if you go back to the course section, there's a whole bunch of new ones you can go through. And a couple of them are, I, you know, there's, there's some materials there that, I mean, I use literally every day. And uh, the one like the two numbers worksheet is, is something that, uh, I mean, I'm shocked how well it works. Uh, I, I went to a fundraiser and, and people were commenting about how good I looked, you know, <laughs> pat my back. But really it was, it, it's this it's this daily exercise I do with my goal of getting down to a certain body weight uh, to lift and weightlifting meets. Um, it, it's 96 kilos. And that's probably outside of my return from the Middle East when I was very ill. Uh, the lightest I would have been in, in a long time, even lighter after the Velocity diet, of course. The V diet was wonderful, but the, the results didn't stick. And uh, we'll, we'll discuss that in the goal section too. And in my new upcoming book, we'll talk about some of that same stuff too. Uh, if you're a, a member, you already have it. And if you'd like to join, uh, when you when you log in, put goals, G-O-A-L-S, uh, all caps uh, as you type it in, and you'll get three months for 29 bucks which is really a pretty good deal for the site. You know, that comes out to about, you know, still under 10 bucks a month. And just for the resources and the, the, the books and the documents and the, well, the form is wonderful, but then you also get the courses and that's, that's kind of nice. So uh, enjoy. And let's start with this week's questions. Again, this is episode 143. Um, when we, we, we flipped a hundred uh, at just about a year ago, I was, I was pretty enthused about it because like Pat Flynn told me, most podcasts don't make it to seven. And here we are at 143. Uh, a, someone posted uh, a very negative thing about that episode. I, I deleted it because it was so stupid, but uh, that doing a hundred episodes just doesn't demand that much celebration. And it's interesting because as I'm, I'm doing this today, it's graduation season. And uh, for those of us who have you know, graduate from high school. I have an associate's, I have a bachelor's, I have two master's degrees. I have a bunch of advanced degrees, uh, in, in, um, little other areas too. Every time I just, every time you finish something, every time you hit a milestone, celebrate it because there's not a lot to celebrate. One of my young friends just graduated, uh, got, got their bachelor's this week. And, and I, I'm part of my, <laughs> I guess, old man duty is to make sure you celebrate this and enjoy it. Uh, because, uh, you know, it's, there's not a lot in life sometimes to celebrate. Things get tough. So that uh, that means then just a month or two we'll be at 150. Uh, and then not long after that, we'll be a full three years of this podcast, uh, never missing a week. So let's get started with a question from Darren. Darren, I loved your work on Bewitched. It's a little bit of a long-winded question, but looking for some advice on training. As a father of a four-year-old and a two-year-old, sleep has been almost non-existent the past three and a half years. Uh, it's funny you say that because that would put me at 1994 when I had the, is that right? Uh, 96, pardon me, um, when I had the exact same issues. Uh, in 1996 was when I had my first true major retirement from uh, athletics because I just couldn't keep doing the juggle. Uh, I think I have some insights to help you with, and let's get going. And it says, and with the additions to the family, my equipment has been exiled to the garden shed. Yeah, yeah, I know that one. <laughs> I used to train in a bedroom, uh, and then I got taken over by a daughter. 
uh, and the, the range is from minus 10 to 40. So basically where you live, oh, you're in Ontario, Canada. We have uh, a very similar uh, weather pattern. Uh, it is so hot here in Utah that you can't leave our equipment outside because it hurts to touch it. We use gloves more in the summer than we do in the winter because touching the iron just freaks you out. It just, it hurts. And then of course in the, the winter, um, you know, I don't know what it would be in Celsius, but uh, we've been down probably, yeah, probably minus 10, maybe even a little bit lower in my gym and training, which is just silly. It's just silly. It's so cold. Um, I've been training the evening after the kids are asleep and also early morning, which I prefer, but both have seemed to almost cause argument with the better half, feeling like I'm being selfish. Uh, I'm not a marriage counselor. I'm not a marriage therapist, but this is important that you have this conversation. You will be a better father and husband and person if you get those workouts in. I know that from my own experience. Um, lately, it seems the best workout I can get in is when I take the dog for a walk at 5 a.m. with a 25-pound plate in my backpack and stop to do some push-ups and pull-ups at the park. You know, that's pretty good. Uh I work a job that requires me to be sitting in a truck for up to 10 hours at a time, and I try to get out and stretch and do a couple of quick rounds of bodyweight squats and push-ups when I have time. I'm 36, year old, 36 years old, 6 foot, uh, 245, 111 kilos, and have a hard time losing the fluff around the midsection. I guess my question is more looking for suggestions on keeping training in my life without causing tension in the household. Well, welcome to my world. I've been there. You'll notice a lot of my programs uh, that are still I use today. Uh, the genesis comes from the mid-1990s, and the reason is I had the same issues. Uh, the transformation program, which is about a 15-minute workout. Um, Dan John University, go to transformation program. It's fairly simple. The, there's a few exercises that are kind of high-end. For some people, I, I think they're, I mean, frankly, I think they're really simple variations, but... Um, you know, three 15 minute workouts a week. I mean, that's, that's not a lot. Another one would be the one lift a day program, which was the, the first really famous program that I wrote, uh, that got this massive conversation going on T at T nation. When I wrote the article, I mean, it was massive and it, and it, and people still talk about the OLAD. And of course the joke with that one is, uh, can I do, uh, can I add benches to the squat day? Well, then that's two lifts, not one lift. I found that timing my workouts, uh, timing the rest periods helped me a, a lot. And you'll see that in the transformation program. Another thing that you might find really helpful is I would say train three days a week and have a hard lower body workout as best you can, whatever that means to you. Have a hard upper body workout and then have a moderate whole body workout. Uh, that's basically the, the vision of the transformation program. But whatever that means to you in your current situation, you focus on the lower body one day, and that would include deadlifts, clean, snatches, squats. And uh, and then the other day, you would focus on the pull-ups and push-ups and bench and presses and the rows and all that. And on that third day, um, you know, you would cut the reps back uh, a lot, maybe the sets back and cut the load back and try to do everything you did on those other two days at a moderate level, a moderate to easy level. Um, I really found a lot of success doing that. Um, how do I say this? Uh, this too shall pass and it won't be long. Will you be <laughs> sitting at a bar playing cards, uh, with your daughter? Uh, <laughs> and it happens fast. It happens like this. So I will say one thing. Please enjoy these times with the little ones. Um, there are some challenges, and I get it. And the nice thing is, and I think you're probably already noticing, almost probably by the month, some tiny little thing happens. Like when they can make their own breakfast, it is like, oh, when they, they know how to turn on the television set or whatever they play with now. I don't You kids and your you know, machines. And blah, blah, blah. When they can make their own breakfast and turn on an entertainment thing, oh, it, and you get that weird extra hour of sleep that that first time you get that morning sleep in, and you wake up on a Saturday morning that's nine o'clock, and you're like, "Ooh, this feels odd." I feel refreshed. 
Um, and I'm sure you're probably already starting to eliminate diapers a little bit. You're, you know, teaching them to clean up after themselves and stuff like that. It just, life is going to get easier and easier and easier. But I'm just warning you at the same time, uh, this stuff is going to, you'll miss some of it. So uh, I hope I helped. Uh, you'll see a lot of this in my book, Never Let Go, a lot of these programs. Or, of course, just, just Google some of this. Or, of course, the easiest way, danjohnuniversity.com. Use goals, G-O-A-L-S, and you get that big death discount. Okay, thanks. We have a question from Zach, and this is nice because it's a short question. I know you talk strength training for throwers, but what about throw training for lifters? Yeah, I, I think there's real value. Uh, it's called the Medicine Ball, and I like the Dynamax uh, brand the best. I don't get a lot of value over a, any um, med ball over about six pounds, um, maybe about uh, two or three kilos. Um, I, I get it. I mean, people like to, sh <laughs> to have these idiotic macho medicine ball workouts, but throwers throw. And when you're doing these things, what you're trying to do is get the volume in. You're trying to get the big movements in. Uh, I'm a big fan of throwing medicine balls. Uh, if you are like, like you said, lifter here, let's just pretend you're an Olympic lifter, um, throwing the ball for height, throwing the ball, uh, for height straight up, throwing the ball for distance backwards, uh, a, a variety of, uh, jumping, almost like a thruster jump, uh, for height, let it hit the ground, recover, do every rep correctly. Uh, don't make it into a contest, uh, for rotational work, uh, throwing a medicine ball into a wall. Uh, make sure you use both sides. Uh, I think that's very important. Um, yeah, big, big fan. Um, if you can't, for example, lift enough, uh, you're just not strong enough or there's another issue, med ball training really is fast twitch work and you'll get a lot out of it. Yeah. Throwers throw. Uh, if you do have something like, uh, you know, a lighter, lighter ball that's maybe... Oh, I have 2,000 gram balls that I have my throwers use, my baseball players use. Uh, not with their throwing arm. Uh, we have them throw it backwards. We have them throw them backwards uh, into a wall. Boom, like that, to give some balance to the body. That's kind of weird, but it works. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, big fan. Um, years ago, I had a friend from Finland, and I asked him, why do you Finns you know, do so much medicine ball work? And he looked at me like I was an idiot. The Finns have a funny way of, of looking at Americans, so maybe he wasn't thinking I was an idiot. And he said, that's all we had. And I was like, oh, well, there that, that solves a lot of problems. <laughs> that's why you didn't do all this other stuff. You had a medicine ball. So, uh, Zach, good luck. Throw, throw, throw. Um, I know online uh, there's a nice little thing. You might want to look it up. I think there's an article. If you type in medicine ball and javelin, you'll find a whole bunch of resources including exercises, <laughs> I, it just amazes me what people uh, can think of. Uh, they had these ones where they, you know those clamshells you do with uh, glute loop? Uh, they have these throw, they, they do clamshells for distance, you know, they throw it out and fun stuff. I, I hope that helps. And yes, so I'm a big believer in it. We have a question from Eeg, EG. Can I replace back squat with goblet squat? in your H and R program for the life of me. I don't know what H and R program is. So I would say yes, uh, but I don't know what it is. So uh, and this, but actually you bring a good point. We're to a point on, uh, on the internet where everyone likes to use an acronyms. And the problem is a lot of us don't know what you're talking about. Uh, my daughters were telling me about these, these losers and they had some kind of, like short and little thing. And I was like, how am I supposed to know that? You know, that's, that's not me you learn in school. And they're like, Oh, everyone knows it. Well, I don't. So this is a good example. I don't know what you're referring to. Um, let's just say this, since I cannot load goblet squat to my ideal back squat benchmarks, I can now goblet squat 28 K or two twenty four K in the rack position for double kettlebells. That's fine. I perform your, your goblet squat. That's great. My arms are not the limiting factor. My legs are. I'm, I'm trying to stay as close to the program as possible since I know it's not a good idea to modify, modify programs, but I'm a very bad back squatter and I really love the goblet squat. 
Yeah, and the interesting thing, I think we have another question coming up on this in just a moment. But a lot of us just aren't very good at squats. And uh, I'm sure some power lifter is rolling their eyes right now and they're going to say I'm terrible and all these other things. But the truth is some people don't squat well. Uh, uh, I've, I've noticed that throughout my whole life, my whole career. Uh, some of us pick up certain things really quickly. Um, I, I had a student who jumped up and did 66 pull-ups, shook out his arms, jumped out and jumped up again and got up to, a, uh, did another set to, up to a hundred. And I thought to myself, I, I don't know how to teach that. I don't I mean, that's that there's DNA in there. There's, there's stuff. So it's okay not to be perfect in, in a certain lift. Um, as long as you, I, I think it's important to do the movement of squatting. The load isn't as important. So I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and do it. I, even though I don't know the program, I think you'll be fine. Uh, do you recommend me working on goblet front squat until I can reach the upper limit of kettlebells available, which is double 32s? You know, unless you're competing, double 32s in the double kettlebell front squat, that's a that's a true effort. That's that's good stuff. You you don't need to do much else. So I'm I'm giving you permission. Here I am giving you permission to do that. And I think, I think you'll be a happier, wiser person by doing that. Um, I, he doesn't want to, it's funny, his last line, I don't want to give away my love of goblet squats. Well, uh, I have it on authority that goblet squats love you too. So enjoy. Yeah. When in doubt, do the movement of squatting and don't worry so much about the load. We got a question from Noah. This particular question from Noah seems to have a long arc to it. <laughs> I wanted to get your thoughts on rounded back training, especially Jefferson curls and back extensions and hyperextensions. Uh, not sure if the terms are interchangeable. Uh, what? Yeah, I mean, I know what you mean by them. There's the what, the other variation called reverse hypers, and that's when the loads on the feet. Uh, you do rounded back hypers. Uh, yeah, Dick Notmeyer, when he was coaching me, we, I, I had to stay in that Olympic lift position. And uh, I got up, and I'm not bragging here, but I, I used the two big blue plates one time. Uh, the blue plates were 102.5 pounds, which would be oof, um, 47 kilos each. And I did sets with those. And Dick used to you know, put them on my back because the way we had it set up in our gym, um, I later figured out a, a way around it, but the, the, the hyperextension rack was old school. So your legs were, you know, not very high up. So your legs were stuck into, oh, maybe, you know, yeah, maybe waist height. No, even shorter. And so if you had 45s on the barbell, when you came down, the plates would hit the ground. And, it, and that's not something you want to do with the weight here on your neck suspended by your feet with pads you know underneath your thighs i later figured out that i could use 25s and i would make i would slide on uh all these 25 it looked terrible but the exercise worked and actually i didn't need a spotter with that because i would do this bizarre uh lat pull down to get the weight set and then you know go um have you ever used or pres prescribed them in training they feel like the only exercises that actually train your lower back through a full range of motion and not just isometrically holding the lower back straight throughout various hip hinges. Yeah, I. Uh, if you get a chance, Brett Contreras has a great book called The Glute Lab. Now, I, I always make the joke with this book that you don't really read the book. You, you just carry it and you get your workouts because the book is massive. Uh, Brett does a really fine job explaining um, all the movements in in this book, and he shows the the whys and wherefores of everything. Uh, I'm gonna if you don't know Brett, uh, his Instagram channel is excellent, and uh, Brett Contreras, uh, he's also known as the Glute Guy. I, I'm sure you can find it, and then he's very good about sharing the research for things, and he has a lot of variations for the different. Um, Hyper extensions. Uh, if you do recommend them, what protocols can be applied to them? Easy strength parameters, hypertrophy sets of ten. Is it something else? I like the higher reps on hyper uh, on the hyper extensions. 
Um, I, I'll tell you why, because that's what Dick Notmeyer told me. And that's not the most scientific or well-reasoned response I had, but sometimes a person's experience just screams. And I, when I was doing sets of 10 in the hypers, I always felt good. I, I find it to be a very... Uh, revitalizing, refreshing thing for me to do. And I agree with you about this. Now, when you say round back, I'm wondering if actually you and I are saying the same thing. But, you know, sometimes uh, words get in the way. So I'm wondering, though, if we were at the same facility training, you know, maybe this is how I hyper. <laughs> maybe that is how I do the hyper extension. You know, I'm thinking that maybe I always did it like that. But I could be like that. I wouldn't be surprised. So, yeah, maybe we're saying the same thing. So look up Brett Contreras, see what he recommends, and then whatever he says, I agree. The only thing I would say, I think this is a high rep exercise. The same way I think that the hip thrust is a 20 to 25 rep exercise, clamshells are a 10 to 15 rep exercise, um, ab wheels are two sets of five or maybe sets of 10, one set of 10. There's certain, there's certain natural numbers that flow together with certain movements. And my, my take on this is it would be uh, the tens. Okay. Great question. Thank you. Very unusual question. Uh, I haven't seen uh, a specific hyper expen uh, ex hyper extension exercise question. I don't know, maybe ever. So good. Thank you. We have a question from Jesse. Jesse says your latest podcast had a question about an hour long kettlebell carry and it promoted me to write to you about a group that I'm also part of here in Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia. Uh, I've been there. A great town. An absolutely phenomenal town. I, my first nights there were on the beach and I would get up and swim every day and then they moved me into the city which wasn't as ideal. Uh, called Carry and Connect. It's a free men's health group which meets at 8 a.m. every Saturday morning in my area, rain, hail, or shine. We walk together for an hour along a beautiful creek, all carrying some kind of weight. Uh, Jesse, I'm, you, you, I mean, you had me at hello here. I'm, ooh, I'm all a Twitter. I, I'm so, uh, um, I love this idea. Most of the group like to carry sandbags on their shoulders, ranging from 40 to 80 kilos. Ooh, for an hour? That's man's work. Uh, that's strong woman's work. Uh, yes, some in the group carry 80 for a whole hour, putting down the weight only once for a rest at the halfway point. We also swap weight around as we go. For example, we have a 32 kilo hammer that we might carry for as long as our grip holds. A 32 kilo hammer. Damn. Sometimes we stick to a theme such as farmer carries, suitcase carries, or rack carries. The idea is what we're all doing something uh, for our physical fitness while also getting outside of nature and connecting with our fellow humanity. Uh, it's totally free and open to any adult man who wishes to join us. I don't know any of the guys before I started attending last year, but I've made some really good friends to the group. The kinds of friends when you ask, is anyone free this afternoon to help me move some furniture? And you can bet that someone will put their hand up to help. Wow. That, I, I, oddly inspiring, isn't that, uh, gentle listener? Yeah, it makes you feel good about it humanity. I know this isn't a question, but I thought it would be of interest to you and perhaps your listeners as well. Yeah, it's interesting to me. Uh, folks, let's start organizing our own carry and connect courses. The only thing I am going to ask you, uh, Jesse, is, uh, you know, make it open to everyone, uh, I, I would say. Uh, I think there's value in everyone carrying things. This is fantastic. Good work. Uh, we got a question from Tom. For many years, I've worked very hard to become a solid QT, uh, Quadrant 2 athlete preparing for military service. I became strong, improved my work capacity, that's what we're trying to do here, endurance and all the other qualities I would need. I recently became a parent, and that has shifted my career path significantly, and now on a path to becoming a teacher. My enthusiasm and energy are an all-time low, although I struggle every day to regain them. There doesn't seem to be much value in a teacher having the above capacities. Um, I kindly disagree with you, my friend. Uh, Tom, I've broken up a lot of very serious fights in my life. As a teacher, we had an active shooter. Um, I've had to deal with other kinds of issues on campus. Uh, yeah, I would just 
Tell you one thing they don't teach you uh, is uh, is you can do these active duty uh, active shooter drills your whole life, but when you're but when you're the only adult in the room with forty teenagers and there's someone someone going around and the police are rallying in and it uh, I'm not sure I can I can I don't I'm not sure I can teach that yeah that was that was my children were in the building my own children my godchild was in the building a whole bunch of my friends were in the building and uh, you know I I broke a PVC pipe and started sharpening it and taped it up because I was going to defend my uh, students so yeah some of these things yeah well that was a odd little thing but I think you need to hear it so firstly just say first have you ever gone through periods like this where you feel like your skills are wasted or it's harder to train and if so what did you do to relight the fires yeah it's, <laughs> yeah I know what you mean <laughs> you, you you did all these things, and now it's like, okay, now what? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, going from a, kind of an, a, an elite discus thrower to somebody who has to, you know, you know, we hire a new PE coach, and they're, you know, they're and they're telling me, uh, you know, that, you know, how they're going to run the weight room is by doing, you know, I mean, just a bunch of crap. We'll just say that, and 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 getting no respect back. Um. Yeah, been there. Uh, what do you do for me? I just started competing again. Uh, I just, <laughs> I found other ways to do it to keep the fires going. Because uh, if you're wired like I am, you got to compete. Otherwise, you get uh, you get a little crazy. Um, second, I know that you have worked with military and police, so I'm interested to know your thoughts on what the ideal firefighter might look like. In, a firefighter might look in terms of physical capacities. And what kind of training you would recommend for someone in my position to achieve that? I recently managed before in your Eagle, very impressive, uh, workout of squats and formal walks with a pair of 24K bells. That's very good. And thought building up the same 32s would be a place to start. My friend, if you can do the Eagle with 32s, we're not going to have to worry about your capacity. You're there. That's pretty impressive. Uh, so... I did a podcast recently on four fighter firefighters, but right now I am helping co-author a book on this, uh, on training for firefighters uh, for selection for all kinds of things. the The most important thing is you really want to train in a broad category of things. Uh, I hate that thing where they take a line and they put strength on one side and endurance on the other. I I, I don't like that. I don't like because I believe that there's a, a bit more of a a matrix to uh, a matrix. Yeah. Okay, it's a movie. Okay. Uh, there's a there's a lot more. Uh, of, you know, if if the job calls for you to, you know, some little child is buried and all we have is shovels, um, you're gonna have to be. Where where is that on the strength and endurance matrix? You know, um, you know, you're fire. You're fighting a fire, a bad one. And, uh, you know, you're there and, you know, the fire is moving and spreading like, you know, my brother, you know, uh, sadly, of course, you know, lived in paradise, California. And, you know, we had some opportunities to talk about, you know, how the firefighters were just, you know, they were just, they just kept going and going and going, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, there was issues with their with their air and with their, you know, water hydration, I, you know, not the water you're, you know, spraying with the water here. So that's going to be a different thing. Um, I think a firefighter should be strong, should be able to sprint, should be able to climb. And to me, the most important thing is you got to carry. I think fire firefighters uh, should uh, major in carrying. When I work with, there's a special group of uh, uh, of military forces I work with, and after my workshop in Okinawa or Hawaii, I can't remember which one, they sent me pictures of what they do, not the TV show stuff, but what they actually do, and the guys were joking because what their job they are, they're just fancy. Uh, they have all the, it should be the loaded, you know, special loaded carry service, you know, because uh, that's what they do. They they mostly carry things. 
ammo and gasoline to places and, you know, into nooks and crannies for other things. Yeah. So, I, I gosh, I hope that helped. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Reese has a question. I train at home and I've never had a squat rack. So the only squats I've ever done are front squats and goblets. Your recent stuff on the movement quadrants really hit home because my deadlift and clean keep going up and up and up, but squats always feel like getting into a fight and progress is slow. Reese, you're just like me. So my thought, folks, real quick, uh, I began to realize that most people, are, most people are either good at the push or the pull, and then most people are either good at the hinge or the squat. I mean, obviously, the outliers are great at everything, but... Like for me, I'm a I'm a push hinger. I mean, I can I can swing the kettlebell. I can snatch, clean and jerk. I'm fine with that. But I'm great at the bench press. I'm great at the military press. And then comes the pull up and the squat, and I like, boo! You know, I shrink right down. Uh, so that's his point. I've got really long legs and a short torso, and if I do front squats by the book, vertical torso, ass to heels, etc., it feels like it's nothing but glutes. But I've also found if I lean over a little, it actually feels my, my qual. I actually feel my quads pulse at the start of each rep, a lot more powerful. I'm basically turning into a back squat with a bar in front. So I'm wondering if back squats might be the right squat for my body proportions, or at least as a variation to drive progress. I appreciate if you have any thoughts on this. Well, you start off with that first line uh, that you don't have a squat rack. So, you know, when I was growing up, we all had that issue. And so you'd clean it, uh, and then you'd uh, get it on your back, and you'd get your reps in, and then you'd toss it back over, and then you'd guide it down. Because, man, if you drop weights when I was growing up, you were a sinner uh, at best. Yeah, I I, I think you're on the right track. I, I think you're, you're exploring the right the right. I think you're. I think you're right. Um, I'm just not sure if even if you, without racks, this is going to be a tough thing to do, if at all possible, Reese. It'd be interesting if you could get into a gym. Don't get a membership because uh, you have. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you have all the equipment at home, but maybe every so often buy a gym membership and just try out back squats and get a sense of them. I, I bought a membership one day. I couldn't believe it was 15 bucks for one workout. And the, and the little girl, her name was Paris, and she was a trainer. And she kept telling me that it was so much cheaper to ni- sign up for $9 uh, occurring the rest of my life. And I thought, well, no, I'd rather pay 15 bucks and work out once. Um, she asked me about, have you ever done sports? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. It's, okay, I'll stop on that. So maybe get a membership. Maybe once a month, uh, like here where I live, we have a, a community place over here, has a nice squat rack. I wouldn't use the community, but if it's, um, my dog just said hi, uh, If but if it's something as simple as, uh, you know, going down there once a month, once every couple of weeks, however you decide, get your back squats in there and continue this experiment with good racks, okay? Thank you, Reese. We got a question from Kristen. I'm a physical therapist and a colleague and I were trying to find a good, more objective way to find a patient starting weight when working on strength. Kristen, and when you find it, you let me know, because that's the million dollar issue. Uh, I, the upside of machines is you just go like this with the selector key and, you know, just figure it out. Many of our patients are not appropriate for one rep max testing. No one, I mean, there's very few people who are appropriate for one rep max testing. That's what we do on a platform with judges in front of us. So typically I've tried to loosely find their five rep max. That's not bad. And work from that. My colleagues wondered if there was a formula or more precise way to do this so that we could be better about properly dosing our patients. Because underdosing, especially with elderly patients, is definitely a problem in our field. Yeah, that's been a question for a while. Uh, have you figured out this for clients in the past? Or is there a formula or other method you might suggest, recommend we could apply in the outpatient physical therapy setting? Well, yeah, I, every time I talk to anybody, you know, I've, I've had to go to physical therapy several times in high school. I had a, 
uh, I had a fairly serious knee injury. Uh, of course, the hip replacements, uh, wrists and stuff like that. And almost instantly, and my knock on you guys, and don't take this wrong because this is a long time ago, you, is I got cleared uh, with my right knee when I could do a leg extension uh, with my right leg was 60 pounds. That was clearance. I was cleared. And like I tried to, to tell her, I was like, yeah, but I mean, I can go, I can't, I can't remember what it was at the time, say 200 or 300, my left leg. And, uh, oh, no, you're fine now because you can do 60. But, <laughs> you know, we're, we're looking at a, you know, a third, a half the load here, whatever it was, you know. So the most important thing is just remember – and this is the key, and, and to sit and stare at each other for a moment and remind each other of this. Tom DeLorme's phrase is progressive resistance exercise. Progressive resistance exercise. And remember, Tom started with 10 sets of 10 for seven to nine exercises. My God, imagine how long those workouts. But they were using one pound, and it wasn't, and it was good. I mean, it was good. You know, certainly there's some value in just, moving, you know, a pound or two. I've been there, you know. Uh, but you just got to keep monitoring and keep adding and adding and adding. Um, I like your point about underloading. Um, there is a... People can't go by feel until... Uh, what is it? Perceived, uh, perceived, you know, this idea of perceived rep or something like that. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. And it doesn't matter. Um this, this idea that, you know, I, I have this, oh yeah, I, that feels like I could do more. Now I can do that because I've been doing this for almost 60 years in the weight room and I'm three, I'm 57 years in the weight room now. So, you know, I, I know when a weight feels heavy and it's weird because like when I Olympic lift, there'll be days where 95 pounds feels heavy and I'm like, what in the world? Um, and then of course the next day I'm like, what, what was going on? Um, progressive resistance exercise, um, do your best to keep, keep the best records you can. Uh, I think, I think a lot of people make mistakes when they write down their workouts. I do think you should have, um, the exercise first. Wow. Where did I come up with that? And then reps and then sets and then load and then rest period. And then the last column should be why we're doing this. And I think, uh, I think it's always worth the time to have a column that says, why am I doing this? Um, and what, what will happen there is if you keep those, if you look at those logs over time, you will see that if you have me as a client, uh, you're going to have me doing two pounds in the, in the leg extension. And then pretty soon it's going to be 50. And then pretty soon it's going to be 100. And pretty soon it's going to be 150, 200. And you're going to look at that chart and go, okay, this, this is weird. Cause you know, we're such good physical therapists. You know, he's gone, you know, he's improved literally thousands of percent stop, catch yourself for a minute and just kind of remind you that, uh, those of us who've had physical therapy, we're not coming from normal. We're coming from here. And as we, as you do your good work and as I do my work, we get, we sneak up on normal probably fairly fast and then it flattens out and i think what we want to start thinking about from now on is from there where do we go sadly and of course if you know my work on um working with pts that is the area uh, i call it the, the red light you guys are wonderful lot that's when you show me how to use a walker you show me as you came and i think you guys are very good at the end when you say you're done at the green light you're done go you're fine it's that middle part. Of course, what I think we should be focusing on the middle part is work capacity. Gosh, I hope that helps. That was a, that's a, that's an interesting question. Um, is there a formula? Yeah. You're going to come up with it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think it's E equals MC squared. I, I could be wrong. Um, thank you. It's a very good question. Wow. Um, as I look down, that wraps it up for today. Uh, as always, you know, I, we're here at episode 143. Uh, we're going to keep doing this for a while. So if you have a question, send them to podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. I'll do my best to answer each and every one. Um, 
somebody noted the other day, we seem to get a lot of the same questions. I will continue answering those repeated questions because sometimes A, there is a little bit of a variance and B, I hate to say it's nicely. There's no way to say it nicely. People have become very lazy and they, you know, they, they're not going to Google it or whatever you call it. Okay. Thank you. Well, and then until next time, let's all keep on lifting and learning. Thank you very much. I'm Dan John from danjohnuniversity.com. Thank you.